Hey, if you're thinking about making a move to Tucson, Arizona's east side, then you really need to know about Tanga Verde. Tanga Verde sits at the base of the Rincon Mountains over there to the east, as well as the base of the Santa Catalina Mountains up there to the north. And so chances are, if you do find a home out there in Tanga Verde, you're probably gonna find one that actually has a nice mountain view. And so what we're gonna do in this video today is go into a deep dive into three completely distinctively different neighborhoods out there in Tanga Verde so that you can get a good idea of the variety of options as well as to find out if Tanga Verde is the place that you want to move to when moving to Tucson's east side. So sit back, relax, and let's get after it right now. What's up everybody? Hey, it's Paul Dunn and I'm a local real estate agent with eXp Realty as well as a certified mortgage advisor with Nexa Mortgage. So basically I've got you covered on both sides of the ball when making that move here to Tucson. Now, if this is your first time on the channel and you wanna know everything there is to know about eating, sleeping, working, hanging, and just living in, in Tucson, that's the old Pueblo, then go ahead and hit that little subscribe button. Tap that little bell and you'll be among the first to be notified anytime we drop a new video. Now, Darcy and I get calls every every single day from folks just like you who are thinking about making that move here to Tucson and we absolutely love it. So if you're thinking about making that move, go ahead and pick up the phone, give us a call, shoot us a text message, a DM. I mean, heck, send a carrier pigeon. I don't care, just reach out to us because we got your back when making that move to Tucson. Now, let's get into Tango Verde. Okay, so I've got the map here in this little red dotted area here, that is Tango Verde. And you'll notice that to the, to the east, you've got the Rincon Mountains, and then the Santa Catalina Mountains up here. And then over this way is going to be downtown Tucson. So folks always ask me, so how far away is it to go from Tanga Verde to downtown Tucson? And generally, you're about 9, maybe 10, 11 miles away from actual being downtown. So it's quite a haul. And the way that you're going to typically get down there is going to usually be via Speedway, or you're gonna take the Eastern Catalina Highway to get down to Speedway and over to, over to Tucson. Now, something else that people always ask me about is, you know, we love Tango Verde out there, but where are the medical facilities? Well, you do have a few, quite a few doctors up in this area right here, but what I wanna show you is, you've got Tucson Medical Center right down here, which is just off the of ground. So it's pretty easy access from anywhere in Tango Verde to get over the Tucson Medical Center. Then another thing a lot of folks ask about is golf. Because people come to Tucson to play a lot of golf, right? And so you've got two golf courses out there in Tango Verde. One is the Arizona National Golf Club, right up here, the northern part. And then the other is going to be the 49ers Country Club Estates, right down here. And we're going to take a look at this place in just a moment. In one of my most recent videos, I asked our viewers to tell us what was their most favorite part of Tucson. And one of, my, one of the comments was, I believe, I think the Tango Verde might be my favorite. And so I thought, okay, let's make a video about Tango Verde. And when we're showing clients from out of town uh, properties, Tango Verde is becoming one of the more popular places that people do ask us about. And in getting feedback from them, there's a few things that stick out. Number one, you're gonna end up with a little bit more land than you would in a lot of the other areas of Tucson. But number two is you're located at the base of the Rincon Mountains as well as the Santa Catalina Mountains. And so the chances are you're gonna get a, a good view of either one of those, if not both. And number three, here's one of the things that really caught our eyes about the Tango Verde area, is the sheer amount of greenery. There's a lot more trees, a lot more greeneries, a lot more greenery in the Tango Verde area as opposed to some of the rest of Tucson. And I believe that's why a lot of folks are drawn out to the Tango Verde area. All right, so let's head on over to niche.com. That's a website I use for a lot of resources. And by the way, if you're thinking about moving to a specific area, want to do some research, find out about crime, uh, neighborhood statistics, then niche.com is a fantastic place for you to go to. So I'm over here right now and niche.com gives Tango Verde, overall grade of an A, right? And what it says here, I, I love this, number five in best suburbs to raise a family in all of Arizona. Well, if you come down here to where they actually issue the grades, they give the public schools an A, they give the, uh, what is it, good for families an A, and they give, you know, health and fitness an A, outdoor activities an A. And by the way, let's go back to the map real quick. 
right here where you're located in uh, Tango Verde, you've got a lot of outdoor activities from Sabino Canyon all the way over here to the Dabab Dog. I don't even know how to say that. But then you've got the Reddington Pass as well over this way too. So there's an awful lot of stuff that you can do on the outdoor side of things too. So back to niche.com. So I'm gonna roll, scroll down a little bit here. And a lot of folks wanna know, okay, what is the percentage of renters to homeowners? So right now, the, only 4% of the properties are rentals out in Tango Verde, which basically means basically that 96% of them are owner occupied. So I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit more. There's one more thing here I wanna show you on niche.com, and that's the Tango Verde rankings. So we already know it's number five uh, best suburbs to raise a family in Arizona, but check this out. Number eight, places with the best public schools in Arizona. So if schools are a thing for you, you got school-aged kids, then Tango Verde is a great place for you to consider buying a property. So one more thing I think you need to know about Tango Verde is the fire protection. So you see their fire department over there is privately owned. It's called Rural Metro. And what they do is they'll sell you a fire, uh, fire protection subscription. And it's typically on an annual basis. You can see right here that they've got a three-year plan as well. But what's interesting too, is a lot of folks don't know, is that if you buy a property in Tango Verde, the if the previous owner had the subscription to the fire protection for the fire department, then you know obviously there's gonna be a portion of that that you may be responsible for as long as the seller is savvy enough to put it on that settlement statement. So it's just something to be aware of. So who lives in Tango Verde? So what we're gonna do now is head on over to bestplaces.net, check it out, check out some of the stats that they've got over there. And you'll see right here that the median age in Tango Verde is 53. And the, you've also got roughly 27, 28% of them, of, of the folks living out there have children, right? So you, it is a good place and it's supported by what we just talked about to raise kids. So if we scroll down a little bit further, we're gonna to get to the actual population by age. So check this out. Once you get down to the 45 to 54 range, that's when you see the big population jump. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos, you'll notice, you'll know that the median population of all of Tucson is 33, which is lower than it is than, than the average age uh, nationwide. So 45 to 54 makes up a big chunk, but the, the largest chunk is gonna be the folks that are 65 to 74. So you've got a lot of families, you've got a lot of retirees, and you probably have a lot of snowbirds too. Okay, so here we are back at the map of Tango Verde. And what I wanted to do now is to show you three unique neighborhoods in Tango Verde so that you can get a good idea of the different options. And by the way, these three neighborhoods are completely different from one another. But this will give you a good idea of what's available out there in Tango Verde too. So we're gonna start with Bell, Air Ranch Estates, there it is right there. It's pretty much smack dab in the middle of Tango Verde. Up here, you're gonna find Tango Verde High School. A lot of people like to open and roll there. And here's the Hermosa Montessori School. And down here, something called the Barnyard Craft House and Eatery. And I gotta tell you, every time we go out to Tango Verde, if it's around lunchtime, we are stopping at the Barnyard because they have the best ahi BLT in town. And by the way, did you ever think you could get good ahi in Tucson? And, and that's where you're gonna find it. Okay, so now we're gonna zoom in here real quick. And what I wanna do is jump on the map and show you around this area. So I'll grab this little guy. We're gonna just kinda zoom in. Let's go up here. Or heck, let's go to, actually no, we're gonna come down here. Come on, grab hold, buddy. Grab hold, there we go. So one of the things that you're gonna notice about Bel Air Ranch Estates is not only do you have to keep out the median, but you're gonna be able to find mountain views from pretty much everywhere that you are around here. And you see this little sign up here? The horse sign, the guy riding the horse. You will see folks riding horses down here. And that's one of the things that people like about Bel Air Ranch Estates is that you can have horses. In fact, if you if you see the, the welcome sign, the entry sign for Bel Air Ranch Estates, it's a great big giant horse. So most of the homes in here are going to be fairly large, up to about 3,600 3, square feet. Everything in here is going to be single family residents. You're going to find everything is, has been built probably late 60s, early 70s. And one of the things that you will notice as well is not only do you get some good land, but you may find a property that's going to need to be remodeled or renovated just because they are older properties. 
So one of the things that you'll notice here in Bel Air Ranch Estates is that if you decide to look for properties here, everything's going to come in 600s, 700s, maybe even a little bit more. But again, you're going to get some of that older style property on a little bit of land and more than likely with a nice view. So who lives here in Bel Air Ranch Estates? From what I can tell, it's people that, well, they want to be away from their neighbors, they want to be away from the city a little bit, but they can still get there, but they also want to have that kind of a little bit of a rural feeling too. So you get that all here at Bel Air Ranch Estate. So let's head on over to the next one. Okay, neighborhood number two, we're going to just kind of hop across Tango Verde over here to 49ers Country Club Estates. Let's grab the Google guy and just go right up here and see what we can see. So as you come in, you'll, so let me just show you, that's the entrance right there. You've got Tango Verde over there. And so right here, you're gonna see that we've got the clubhouse, you've got a grill in there, you've got a, a community pool and a community spa. There's lots of stuff to do over here. I believe the driving range is over here on this side. And one of the things that people really like about the 49ers Country Club the States is that there's a lot of activities. They have monthly activities to keep you busy. But the other thing that they do too is the first Friday of every month is what they call date night. And so what you can do is drop the kiddos off at the, at the clubhouse. They'll be hanging out there with their summer counselors. And here's just a good idea of some of the homes out here. And you can, they, they do crafts, they do games. They'll, from what I understand, they get pizza. So then that lets you go on a date night with your spouse. So the houses out here, they range in age. Most of them have been built in the 60s and 70s. A few as new as 2021, believe it or not. There are large homes. I think the largest home out here is gonna be about 4,200 square feet. And one of the things that you will notice too is you've got a lot of greenery out here, right? And you've got a lot of older trees. A lot of these homes have been remodeled. Many will need to be remodeled too. Just depends on what you're looking for. So let's just kind of wander around and I'll show you some more of the homes. But as you can see here, lots of greenery. The homes here are gonna end up being in the mid 600s to maybe mid to high 700s. And again, you get a lot of greenery out here in Tango Verde, especially this area. So why do people like the 49er Country Club area? Well, they like that they can be a little bit further away from the city, somewhat of a rural feeling, but still you have these, again, great mountain views, but you've got a golf course right here. You've got a lot of activities and just a lot of things to do. So let's head on out to the next area. Okay, I think you're really gonna like this one. It's gonna be a, a little bit different than the Bel Air Ranch Estates as well as the 49er Country Club Estates. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump on here to Tango Verde Road and we're gonna head on west a, a little bit to an area called the Lakes at Castle Rock. And folks really like this area, number one, because it's close to a grocery store right here, and it's also close to some restaurants and some other shops over here. There's a great pizza joint here, by the way, called Bear Canyon Pizza. We like stopping there when we come out here to the east side as well. But the other thing that people really like about the Lakes of Castle Rock is when you drive in, it's like you left Tucson altogether in a new world. You've got 14 lakes that are spread in and around this area right here. So as you're wandering around here at the Lakes of Castle Rock, you're gonna find that the majority of the homes are going to be single family homes. You might get some two-story homes out here. In fact, you're gonna get a lot of two-story homes out here, but some of them are actually going to be lakefront property. How cool is that, right? And so one of the things that folks really like about this area is you've got a lot of walking paths, you've got a fitness center, but those walking paths kind of meander in and around all those different lakes out there too. So most of the homes out here were built in the late 1990s. And when we've gone to the lakes of Castle Rock, something that we've noticed is if you come in through the main entrance gate, most of those homes are going to be a little larger, but they're gonna be somewhat of a semi-custom style home, right? But the further back you go towards the backside of the neighborhood, those homes are gonna be more of a, it feels like a cookie cutter type of a subdivision type home, right? But again, a lot of these homes are going to be on lakefront. So the homes here at the lakes are typically a little larger. I'd say 3,600 to maybe 4,200 square feet. And as far as pricing goes, you're gonna see a lot of them in the mid 700s and you're gonna hit the upper 800s and maybe even a little higher than that. And again, I think a lot of people like living here because once you turn into the neighborhood, it feels like a whole new world, not just like Tucson. I mean, you've got all those lakes, but you cannot fish in those lakes. They do have little beaches that you can go and enjoy. Again, they have lots of walking paths. And I think a lot of folks like to live here because it does feel like a different world. So I'm curious, 
If you were to move to the Tanga Verde area, would you pick the Bel Air Ranch Estates? Would you pick the 49ers Country Club? Or would you prefer something that's more like the Lakes of Castle Rock? Or something different altogether? Just drop it in the comments below and let me know. Now, Darcy and I get calls every single day from folks just like you who are doing some research and thinking about making that move to Tucson. So if you're thinking about making that move to Tucson's east side or pretty much any part of Tucson at all, go ahead and give us a call, shoot us a text message, send us an email, or you can use that link down below to schedule a Zoom. If doing a custom video tour of an area is something that you want us to do, go ahead and let us know because we got your back when making that move to Tucson, Arizona.